In chemistry, we study matter. In fact, chemistry can be defined as a study and a manipulation of matter. So a very good question to ask ourselves is, what is matter? Well, to address that question, let's consider planet Earth. As we all agree, planet Earth is made out of matter. But what kind of matter? So let's zoom in a little bit. Here you see Southern California on a quite unfortunate day. In fact, there's a couple of wildfires going on. The smoke of the wildfires, the water in the ocean, the land mass, all of these things are matter. And if you zoom in and look at the city of Los Angeles, you see that the buildings, the mountains, the cars on the highway and the highways themselves are all made out of matter. They're all matter. Zooming in even more, you see the beach of Santa Monica and the grains of sand on the beach are matter too. This lovely couple looking into the camera is also made out of material. It's matter. What kind of matter? Well, let's zoom in even more. Into this person's body. You see that this person's body is made out of cells. In fact, your body is too. And cells are composed of functional units called organelles. For instance, a nucleus or a mitochondria. Well, these units are not the fundamental building blocks yet. In biology, the fundamental building blocks are molecules. For instance, a protein. Proteins are very important molecules in biological materials. But chemically speaking, molecules are not the fundamental building blocks. You see that this protein is made out of little spheres. Those spheres represent atoms. Atoms are the fundamental building blocks in chemistry, the fundamental building blocks of matter. So the good question to, uh, to uh, answer is, what is an atom? Here's an example. This is just a representation of an atom. We don't really exactly know what an atom really looks like. That may seem odd, but an atom is a very small particle. And we will see in this course as we go along that we can say many important things about atoms. And we'll also see that this representation here is just a representation that is not necessarily accurate. So why is it so difficult to say something very definite about an atom? That's because they are so amazingly small. How small are they really? Well, let's do a comparison. Let's consider a grain of salt. A small grain of salt is about half a millimeter. And if you shrink a grain of salt by about 10 million times, then you end up with the size of an atom, which is about 50 picometers. So 10 million times sounds like a lot. It sounds like a large number. But actually, 10 million times is not inconceivably large. For instance, in the United States, there are 300 million people, a number a little bit larger than 10, 10 million. So let's look at another example. Let's look at planet Earth once again. Planet Earth is about 13 million meters wide, or 8,000 miles. If you shrink planet Earth by 10 million times, then you end up with an object that is about the size of a skippy ball, or about one meter. So leaping from the size of planet Earth to the size of a skippy ball seems like a big step, but it's not an inconceivable step. It is conceivable. We can comprehend the magnitude of this leap. So even though atoms are very small, they're not inconceivably small. They're real objects. And uh, that is illustrated in this picture right here. Even though atoms are very, very small and we can't see them, with our eyes because the wavelength of light is actually larger than the atom itself. But there are different tools that we can use to visualize atoms. Here you see a recording that was made with a very special type of microscope called scanning tunneling microscope. This microscope can see where atoms are. And in this picture you see seven atoms. Two of them are huddled together. This Measurement was made by Professor Wilson Ho at the University of California, here on campus. Now, what he can do, he can even pick one of these atoms up and move it somewhere else. In the second picture, you see one atom has been removed from the middle and is now together with a cluster of two, forming a cluster of three. So you see that atoms can actually be picked up and change the location, just like a particle would. So atoms are real things, they're real particles, they have a mass, they occupy a volume. So this experiment shows that atoms are not just some kind of abstract notion or the byproducts 
of the theoretical fantasies of scientists. They're real things. They come in all kinds of flavors. Here you see the periodic table, and the periodic table is something we will be talking about a lot in this course. There are about 118 atoms, and we call these atoms elements. They are the elemental building blocks of life. 118 different kinds of atoms, they have different kinds of properties. And these different kinds of properties relate to the different properties of materials all around us. Now, of these 118 elements, only 80 are actually stable. We will learn about the properties of these materials as we continue in this class. So let me summarize this. What we've seen is that matter all around us is composed of atoms. And atoms, chemically speaking, are the fundamental building blocks of matter. Second, atoms are very small. They're small, but they're not inconceivably small. They're real objects, and they have certain properties. Atoms have properties that differ from uh, another atom of a different type. So, the different properties of the atoms relate to the different properties of matter all around us. And we will see in this course exactly how.